with ice. <laughs> well, young man, when I'm in town, yeah. you and me, Biz, gonna get it down. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Tonight we're at the Apollo Theater in Harlem to discuss justice, particularly justice for blacks and other minorities. With us tonight, the Reverend Al Sharpton, C. Vernon Mason, two men whose distrust of our judicial system has caused them to withhold the cooperation necessary to pursue the alleged attackers of Tawana Brawley. Are these two modern day civil rights heroes or shameless self-promoters who would show up at a car wreck <laughs> Also joining us tonight, we have Professor Alan Dershowitz, whose legal accomplishments include keeping Klaus von Bulow out of the slammer. Well, we've got a lot of questions for the Reverend Al and Mr. Mason tonight. Let's hope that finally, unlike on the Phil Donahue show, they got some answers. America, I don't have to introduce our guests on stage here. You've heard me refer to Reverend Al Sharpton as Fat Al a number of times. Well, he's lost a little weight. Lost a little weight. Although Roy Orbison's still doing his hair. Yeah. Now, now, wait a second. You're, you're wait, not going to let me wait, get away wait, with wait, that. Wait, wait, you're not going to let me get you, away with you that. You and Secaucus do all this woofing and talking. Yeah. I even heard you one night when I was not invited tell me to watch my big behind. You in Harlem now, you watch your little... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, on, Al, on Reverend Al Sharpton's right, and that is the wrong side for this man to sit on. He should be sitting on the left. We've got C. Vernon Mason, who is an attorney and an activist, all right? And of course, sitting next to these two gentlemen, Alan Dershowitz, an attorney, professor at Harvard Law University. Let me start with uh, Al first, Reverend. It's now been over 25 years since the great civil rights movement of the 60s. Is it possible in 1988, for a black person to receive equal justice under the law? If one looks at what is happening today, it is absolutely impossible for a black to expect equal treatment under the law. Uh, we are seeing it just in the state of New York alone. In the past two years, we've seen a grandmother shot dead in her apartment. Nobody went to jail. We've seen Michael Stewart beat to death, nobody went to jail. We've seen the uh, whole situation around Howard Beach. Everyone brags about how Howard Beach is an example of justice. The fact of the matter is, three people were convicted of manslaughter, two of them went home pending appeal. There's never been a black convicted of manslaughter in this state that went home. brought for you from the New York Post, probably your favorite paper, oh, yeah. where, where a white lady was a juror, looked across the jury room, saw a black guy that she claimed mugged her five years ago. They arrested him just on her ID. Tawana Brawley for eight months has been calling names and we can't get anybody arrested but the Morton Downey Show. 
When you talk, when you talk about inequality of justice for black people, aren't you really also including poor people, poor white people, even middle class Americans? I think it's uh, easier for not. people. People are distinguished more easily by race. This is a racist country. They didn't make poor people slaves. No, no, they made black no, no. people slaves. People are racist. Don't don't say it's a racist country. People country, are racist, the all right? Built because on we're racism. allowing other people to make us racist. But the country was built on racism. The country was built on racism. Of course it was. So Blacks were slaves. So it had nothing to do with whether you were poor white people were never slaves. Oh, I beg your pardon. Many white people came here as indentured servants. And right? got free when Where they got they, here. Well, we they never lived. got free no, when we got here. No, if they lived long enough to work their way out of it. No, no. Now, let me go, let me go to Alan. Let me go to Pro Professor Dershowitz. We'll get you in a second, pal. You're right? Harlem, I watch your mouth. Professor Dershowitz, all right? <laughs> zip it, zip it, let's go here. Professor Dershowitz, is there any justice or any question in your mind that there's a double standard of justice in this country, one for whites and one for minorities? It operates in two very distinct ways. First of all, it is not as serious a crime in America today to kill a black person as it is to kill a white person. There's no doubt about that. If you look at the statistics, if you kill a, if you kill a white person in America today, you are ten times, ten times more likely to get the death penalty than if you kill a black person. It's as if we had a statute on the books which made killing a white person first-degree murder and killing a black person manslaughter well, or property. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. That's the truth. Right, wait a second. Let me, ask the, let me ask the good professor a question. Since the Supreme Court said that it states represented their death penalty in the proper way that you could again enforce the death penalty how many electrocutions and uh injections have there been in the country well you there know? are about 2100 people on how death row have and there's actually been, uh, gone a little less than 100 mm -hmm. and most of them have been white that's yes. what you're leading up to that's now right. let me explain why that's the case there are two reasons first of all the southern states which have most people on death row and executed most people, have manipulated the system deliberately to put the white people up front in order to avoid claims of racial bias, number one. Number two, uh, that's the best. Uh, if, if indeed it had been the other way around, though, your argument still would have worked because you would have said I'm it was not, a racist. I'm not even making an argument here. I'm making an observation. But there's another point, too, and this is a little subtle, and this one is race neutral. This one I'm not going to get any applause on. Because it is a more serious crime to kill a white man than to kill a black man in America, inevitably, more white people are sentenced to death now than black people because more black people are killed by blacks and more whites are killed by whites. And the victim is a more important factor in the discrimination than the perpetuator of God, the crime. You, you, you Pablum Pukers can take any argument and turn it any way you want. Okay. But this is, this, is, this is strictly an hypothecation on your part at this time. Oh, no, this no, is no. an observation. No, 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 let, let me give you You've the... spoken to the judges, you've spoken to the juries, They've told you that. No, but let me did. tell you what I, who I've spoken to. All I've right. certainly spoken to the Attorney General of the State of Georgia, who, when we were together on another show called Nightline, made the following observation. He said, oh, no, no, it isn't true, he said, that blacks get less justice than white because you have to understand when white people are killed, he said, that's a more violent crime than when black people are killed. The Attorney General told you the that. The Attorney General said that on national television. you should have had a press conference call for the guy's rear end. Well, I they virtually threw did. They threw out. He deserved to be thrown and out And I made well. a comparison there because that's absolutely right. You know, in the mind, in the eyes of a white beholder, seeing one of your own killed may seem more violent than seeing somebody who you don't identify with killed. But it's the same human being, it's the same let death, me, and we don't treat it equally. Well, let me come, let me come. Let me address my next question to uh, Mr. Mason. 
Vernon, as an attorney and officer of the law, how can you defend tactics that include obstruction of justice, unsubstantiated accusations, and total disregard for the grand jury system? And I'm talking about the Tawana sure. Broly case, obviously. Uh, first, first of all, Adam, uh, we have not done any of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think what we have done is in the highest tradition of uh, being ethical Please let and them being talk, moral. Man. And, oh, I'll talk up. I think what we have done has been in the highest traditions of being moral, being ethical, and being concerned about justice. Now, when you look at a backdrop of what has happened, you asked a question about the last 25 years very, very quickly. Uh, we have to start dealing with the fact in this country that for over 250 years it was legal what has happened to our people as slaves in this country. We have to deal with the fact that from 1800s right after the Civil War up until Brown versus the board, which was 1954, we had legalized apartheid in America. Now, if you look at the last 25 years, and especially let's focus on New York since this is where we, we're, we're doing this show. Since I've been practicing law since 1972, for 10 years, 1973 to 1983, I saw one police abuse, one police brutality case, one race hate, hate case after another. No one even was concerned about that. The Post talks about uh, the way they do stuff now. They used to cover this in page 47, always saying, one case I remember up here in Harlem, the police officer's version was he saw three black women coming toward him. The combined weight of those three black women was 500 pounds. He felt his life was in danger, and he shot one of them down, killing her. Her name was Ruth Alston. Her, her daughter wanted to go to law school. Those cases just went in and out of the system. Nothing was done. So if we look at all of that, Howard Beach was the first instance... But do you still feel this is going on just as absolutely, as, as we sit here. As we sit here. When Alton Matters came up with the model on Howard Beach, the point was, for a victim of a crime now, we're not talking about a person charged with a crime. Alton's point was, for a victim of a crime who saw a cover-up, that it was that person's duty, if that person saw a cover-up uh, uh, in, in the making, not to cooperate with that cover-up. I think that's an ethical position. I do not think that it is ethically sound to say that a person should contribute to a cover-up when they're the victim of All a crime. Right, well, let's say you're that's absolutely right. Let's say you're problem. absolutely right. All right. Let's say, and pardon me, Professor, let's say Mr. Mason is absolutely right and that you can't trust the grand jury and that uh, perhaps this Tawana... Particular grand this particular grand jury Abram, All right. And Martin, let me just, right. just say one point on that. Bob Abrams has never tried a case. He's been working for 22 years. He's never been in court. He's never tried a criminal case. If we wanted to do a show, we would not go to a person who had never gone, done a show. We'd do Mort Downey. That's the same thing that's happened with Bob Abrams. He's never done it before. But the question is, Bob Abrams, no I'll accept, I'll accept what law. you say, but Bob Abrams is the Attorney General of the State of New York, all right? It, 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 Someone should boot Cuomo in sure. the butt, all right? to get Abrams out of there. But let me ask you a question. If all the things you say are true, and all of these, all of these abstract things are happening, why indeed wouldn't you take, and Reverend Sharpton, Tawana Brawley, hold a closed press conference, invite all the press, and let Tawana tell the case right there? Let him tell. And I'd sure as hell, I'd sure as hell let her tell it here, because no matter what happens, Reverend, she is the victim, one way or the other. Absolutely. She's a victim. The result of a closed press conference would be to satisfy the appetite of those of you that think we're playing Murder, She Wrote, and not get justice for Tawana Brown. Why should black people have to hold press conferences for justice? Why can't we build a justice system? that gives justice to blacks and whites. Then why don't you prove, Hansen, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, she damn no near white girl that ever got raped and had to have a press conference, Marla they Hansen. arrested the people he that she accused. People talking about Marla Hansen all the time, as people talk about Marla Hansen as having invited the attack on when her. When Marla Hansen, to you, what you talked about, to one invited the attack. Did to one invite the attack? No, I didn't well, say she was. Well, if Marla Hansen, if Marla Hansen can make a statement and people are arrested, then why can't Tawana Brawley make a statement and people are arrested? All right. 
Did she make a statement? Absolutely. Did she name the people? Absolutely. And they've never been arrested? Never been arrested. And if you, I will name them again. Stephen Pagonis, William Patterson. Arrest them tonight. we have the biggest press conference you want tomorrow morning with the water bottle. Yeah, pal. Do blacks want justice or publicity? Stand by. Introduce some of the other folks who are joining us right now. Loudmouth one, or Loudmouth one, we have uh, Bo Deedle, who is a New York City policeman, one of the most highly decorated policemen in the country. He's got a book here called One Tough Cop. I don't promote books. Tell you. All, right. All right. Also, Loudmouth number two. Loudmouth number two, we have John Flynn, who is a leading statistician in this country. John, how are you? Who's the bodyguard you got with you? Who's the bodyguard? Is that Sam Abadie? That's Sam Abadie. How are you, Sam? Good Let me go back to Professor Dershowitz. Uh, you were going to make a comment in the last segment. I was going to ask you a question about if the tables were turned in the Brawley case and the victim were white and the supposed perpetrators were black, wouldn't everyone be screaming uh, racism? Well, that's part of the point I want to make. I want to accuse these two gentlemen of something worse than unethical behavior, something worse than injustice. I want to accuse them of being ineffective. They have set back the cause of black justice. They have set back the credibility of a great movement started by Martin Luther King and Thurgood Marshall because they have made, they have made serious important claims of racism in America less believable to most Americans by calling people like Robert Abrams bigots, by accusing Robert Abrams of masturbating to the picture of Tawana Brawley, by talking about the mafia and the IRA. They have turned people who would like to see racism eliminated in this country into cynics, and they have, they have hurt the cause that they are themselves trying to promote. I mean, I will, and I, I gotta say, because, Al, because I've had you on the show a couple of other times, and we basically talked about the Brawley incident once on the show, and I didn't come down harder on you. No, you yep. I, I had, show, I had indeed, as I walked into a Los Angeles restaurant, some guy from Wappinger Falls tried to whop me one, all right? Because he thought I was too easy on you. You just heard what he said. You've well, been let, in let, effect. Let me, say You've been in let me say this. I think that the problem that the good doctor here has is a problem that the white liberal establishment, the palcom pupils, as you call them, have with the new uh, rise of black leadership. It was fine when Martin Luther King was doing it down south. But when we came up into their backyard, I and in my wait a minute, I, I want to in my you, backyard. Sir. When we came up in your backyard. backyard and started dealing with the fact that you so-called liberals, like Robert Abrams, who was the attorney general for 12 years and never opened his mouth on a race case, was just as as quiet and was just as as quiet. We have been very effective. It's just that we have decided this time that we do not need the permission of white liberals. We do not need the condom of white liberals. And if you don't want to believe or get involved, that's fine. I want to we will believe. Do it by You're making ourselves. it hard. I want to believe. You know, Mort. You know, Mort. About 40 years ago. White racists used to do the same darn thing. They well, would you pick. Know you were yeah, I wasn't, buddy. I was fighting the men, and I'm fighting black racists now. And you're a black racist. 
You're a black rapist, brother. Mark, are you fighting white racism, too? You're darn right, guy. Mark, what I he, have been for what 40 years. What are you doing to fight white racism? Mark, is what he says, is what he says about white liberals. If you read my book, I blame racism on white liberals, all right, for all the programs that have never worked. Here's what white racists do. They pick isolated cases of white on black, of black on white, excuse me, black on white violence. And they say that represents widespread All right, well, wait black a on white violence. Do, do, That's do what the widespread black people in this do. audience think that but they never give any numbers. Isolated? They never give do any numbers, and that's exactly what you're doing. Isolated? You're picking isolated cases. Do the black and people in this audience think is isolated? Here are the numbers. Damn it. Here are the numbers. There's, one thing that there's, a, there's only one person. There's only one person up there that upsets me. There's only one person that upsets me being a former detective. That's a gentleman in the middle who I have the utmost respect for. C. Vernon Mason. I knew you when you were an attorney. The guy on the... All right, let me talk now. The guy on the right should go back to church and start preaching. The other guy don't care. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story, all right? Let's stop all the rhetoric. Let's stop, let's stop all the rhetoric. I'll let you talk. Listen to Larry Let's stop, let's stop now. all the rhetoric. Hey, Al. Let's stop all the rhetoric. Let me tell you a little story, Al. All right? About your racist police department. I don't cover Let me tell you a little story about your racist police department, all right, Al? And let me finish this story, all right? One day on Palm, one Palm Sunday a couple of years ago, I walked into a scene of 10 little children killed. Shot in the head. Let me finish. 10 little children, eight, eight children, two adults, all shot in the head. And let me finish this story, all right? They all were shot in the eyes and head, but they weren't white. They weren't black either. They were these little Puerto Rican kids. They don't count. Now what happened? Now let me tell you. Now let me tell you what happened. What, what, what is your, what is, now, after a thorough investigation by the good New York City Police Department, a man was arrested, Christopher Thomas, and he was convicted after it. And I'm happy to say that investigation was done, and I was named as one of the arresting officers, and it was a black detective, James McCalvin. He happens to be black, and we both named as arresting officers. And that's what the New York City <coughs> Police Department is. They're not colorblind like you want people to do. You should go, this is, this is. And I'm, and, and I'm tired, and I'm tired. I, and, I'm, and I tell you right now, and I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, Steve Vernon Mason ran for district attorney. Uh, Mike, please, if Steve Vernon Mason ran as district attorney the way he used to talk, I would have voted for him. But of course he got tangled up with your boy. That's the end of it. You'll have a shot up there, pal. You'll have a shot up there. Let me, let me say two things. One is uh, Reverend Al Sharpton fully is operating in the traditions of Dr. King. Remember now. When did he give his last bit? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone. You're ready. Hold the phone. I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. Let me hear Bernie. Fully operating in the traditions of Dr. King. Let us go back. All of the people, just like Alan did, talked about how great Dr. King was. A lot of folks, a lot of folks who raise up Dr. King now, denounced him when he was around, when he was alive. So let us not just accept all this as if it is true. Let me answer your question. Let me ask you a question. Something that we don't like to talk about in this country. He asked you uh, the question, what would have happened if it had been reversed? I can tell you what happened for almost 100 years when I was down south, what would have happened if a person had even been accused? I had a young friend of mine okay, now, who was 10 yeah, years old who was accused apartment. of looking, looking in a white woman's bathroom. They took right, that was him and shot him down. That was the history of America. What happened on the and some of these cases is built. Hopefully, Mr. Mason, hey, hey, Reverend, why weren't you up on Utopia Parkway when that because white boy got it? Because they arrested who did it, and the one that hit and Michael Prisoner, Mr. Blum, has never been arrested. And, and that's why I wasn't on Utopia Parkway. Why weren't you in Howard Beach? Why weren't you in Howard Beach? I live in Howard Beach. Why weren't you in Howard Beach? I happen to live in Howard Beach, and I'm proud. Tell you what. We'll come back and find out as black justice died in white hands.
Let me, uh, first, let me tell you, we're not playing our regular music tonight. We've got our band, the Flaming Caucasians. So that was a good place for them to come on up here, all right? I want to come back to uh, Vernon Mason for just a second. Mr. Mason, you were going to make a comment about the Reverend. Martin, I just wanted to comment on something uh, in response to what Richard has said. He told a brief story. I'd like to tell a brief one about Reverend Sharpton. Uh, last, uh, around last Christmas, and right before that, there were two black men named the Lamont Brothers who had been beaten up in Bensonhurst in Brooklyn. And we were going to march out there just to protest that they got beaten up on Christmas Day. And there came uh, into Charles Hines, who's a special prosecutor for the state of New York, in his office, a confirmed assassination threat against Reverend Al Sharpton. I called up Al. He has two infant children. I said, Al, we got to call this march off. We can't go out there because they are planning on killing you. And he told me, we must go out there. You see, this man, unlike a whole lot of other people who give it lip service, has been willing over a period of time to put his life on the lines for justice. Well, I got a challenge. And so, I got anybody... A challenge. No, no, no. I let, let, got let, a let, 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 I'm responding to him now. now let, let, let me respond to Alex. Okay. Alan said we've been ineffective, and therefore we've set the cause back. One of the problems, and they told Dr. King the same thing, you hurting the cause. Uh, people who are part of the establishment who, are, who is oppressing you always want to tell you how to go about removing that, whether or not you're being offensive, whether or not you should do it this way. I have been condemned because people have said the same thing he said. You're a lawyer. How can you do that? You went to Columbia Law School. How can you do that? You the know, there are other people who want to talk. Is that we do it. Your mind? We do it, Mr. Flynn, because a black is 15 there times are more likely of people to murder a white than a white is to murder a black. Like who are still, who are still, who are still. I want him to talk, then you can talk. There are right? numbers of people in this country who are still in that same kind of position, and somebody has to go out there right. and tell the truth. Let me hear what Alan's response. Let me hear Alan's response. You know, I agree with that, and I agree with much of what you're saying, and you try to claim that the Reverend Sharpton is courageous because he will go on a march. If you want to be courageous... Alan, you wouldn't have marched out there with us. Let me tell you. You would not have marched out there with us. I stood, stood, I stood yeah, now you next to Malcolm X and yeah. introduced Malcolm X Two weeks before he was murdered, was after he got... Right no, no, that's the point. You're missing right my point. Don't tell me what you did. Tell me what you'll do. What you said was my point. You anticipated... No, 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 I got to answer that. Would you? Would you? Would I, I, would I yeah. what? Stand with Lewis Farr. If you right. would have him here, not only would I stand with him, I would introduce him because he's one of the few independent black leaders in the world today. No, 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 we've got to, we've got to move this. Okay. I've got to go to a gentleman by the name, let me introduce Hannibal Ahmed, president of the New York chapter of the Better Family Life in Corbett. Hannibal, your background includes having been taught by the late Malcolm X, now that we've brought his name up. One of your contentions regarding black justice is that in the case of rape, the burden of proving innocence will always be on the black victim, never on the white victim. Right I don't necessarily say, excuse me for a second, first of all, for your, for your fan club, I like to say, I want you to listen to me because you do not know me. And so listen to my point of view because it'd be the first time you've heard this point of view. Second of all, what I want to say is that I'm not here, I'm not here to react to the present condition of the injustices in the American system. What I'm here to say, Martin, is that in order to understand the, the tension, the racial tension between the black man and the white man, we have to understand it historically in relationship to the rise of the Western world and the condemnation or the deliberate and systematic destruction of the black world of All Africa. Right, but how Asia do we start a new history now? How do we say to ourselves, yes. there is a catharsis, Zibit. How do we say there is a catharsis? We must rid ourselves of right. the hate that our parents or grandparents had and know that we can love. I mean, talk is cheap, man, but love is priceless. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. What Martin, the American people, the American people want to know today, how can we bring about harmony in the world today? Tell me. The American people want to know how, in, in the first place, racism came into existence. When we understand the history of that, when we understand that the Western world, the Western mindset came into an existence against the world of the black man, against the world of Africa and Asia, 
then you will know what has happened. The whole history of the world, the civilization that the black man built, the civilization that he ran. All right, was him. all right. But how about Hannibal? Hannibal, how about us not just understanding how the whites reacted that way and how the blacks reacted to the way they were being treated by him? Let's also find out the history of the white man, what made him that exactly. way. What made this him that way? We're about. We'll come this back is, and discuss that in just a minute. Stand by. Come on. Come on. on the Lewis Farrakhan issue for just one second. Alan Dershowitz wanted to respond. When Quickly, I, Alan, because then I want to go to I want to go to Mr. Abadie, I want to go to Mr. Flynn, I want to go to Mr. Hamill. When I was interrupted, I was starting to challenge the Reverend Sharpton to show that he has real courage by standing up and condemning a black bigot like Lewis Farrakhan, who is a racist, an anti-Semite, and a despicable admirer of Adolf Hitler. And if you don't have the guts to call a racist, a racist, who is black in his community, and you call him an independent thinker, then nobody, you have no claim on anybody's conscience. Well, I will, I will, no, I will, I will respond. Let me it. I want to hear from Al. I will respond. I mean, they have harassed us. They've tried to just bar the lawyers, indict me, whatever. I have the courage to denounce a black bigot. I think Roy Ellis is no good, and I denounce him. Mr. Ahmed, one of the things Mr. Ahmed. that we have to not do is react. When we stand <laughs> forth today, the black man, the white man, but when we stand forth as African Americans today, we stand forth as the mothers and fathers of civilization. We stand at the beginning and we can say how everything started. Now, when we say to the American people, how do you resolve this conflict? The first thing we do is teach them. We teach them to get this book in the matter of color by Judge Leon Higginbottom. He documented the colonial black. process. Then we tell them more. about Why do we get them who's right book, black law, white justice. All right. What, Wait a second. What the American let me, people let understand. Let me come over to Flynn here a that second, Hannibal. Let, let me give them some facts. The Let's United hear States your America, facts. United States of America, black is 15 times more likely to murder a white than a white is to murder a black. That's true. That's the truth. In the United States of America, a black is over 20 times more likely to rape a white woman than a white is to rape a black. In the United but States of America, a black is 50 times more likely to rape a white than a white is to rape a black. Get in there. 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 Get statistics that create the problem between all of us. I don't give a damn, Flynn. It's that kind of statistic that creates an inflammatory system among people who want to get together. The media won't let them get together. 
Christ, you won't let me. of civilization, we are talking about the re-education of the world. Today, we are talking about black folks who constitute technically a majority when you consider them all over the southern hemisphere in Africa, and a minority of white folks. When we recognize that there's more than 100... We ain't living in the hemisphere, though. Exactly. We're living right here. I know, but when we recognize, what I'm saying is that when we recognize that the real issue is an issue of power, a real issue is what mindset is going to have responsibility for global management. When we recognize that we're talking about the global management of a black majority, then the American people will have to recognize that it is time for black Americans, for African Americans, to move up into the highest echelons of power. But do you agree world. with me? But do you agree with me? Let me ask you a question. No, Bo. Let me ask you a question, of Mr. Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed, do you agree with me that the black man in this country is fed up with the white man saying, here, let me help you up these steps. You need my help. What? That's bullshit. A black man can help himself right. if the obstacles are removed. Exactly. And Martin, I agree with you 100%. As a matter of fact, I was trained by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to, to say that the black man and woman must do for themselves. I don't want no one to give me anything that I can Audience. give myself. Audience. Come to the loud mouth. You're next. Come on. Apollo, incidentally, we'll be here all week long. Quickly, I want to go to Mr. Abedi. Mort, let's Let me do hear two you. things. Let me hear you. Let's do two things. Let's define get the problem. Get down the microphone. Come on, baby, get down. We're going to do two things. We're going to define the problem, and I'm going to suggest a solution. First of all, let's not make any mistake. There is a double standard for law enforcement in black and white in this country. In the last five years, for example, there were 465 public corruption probes of, of, black, of elected officials. 15% targeted blacks who make up less than 3% of all elected public officials. That means, in the eyes of the FBI, if you're black, you're five times more likely to be corrupt than a white man. If is you that, accept that premise... He, no, I don't. Sam, team. I don't accept that, all now, right? Let me tell you let what the solution you is. Is the reason they, are, they represent 3% of the elected officials, all right? You're saying 15% of them are corrupt. Is the reason they're corrupt because they had to do things to get elected that a white man doesn't have to do? No, they're not corrupt at all. It's just uh, that the allocation of police resources are dedicated to driving black officials from office. Let me read you from an affidavit. Make it quick, man. I got other people. Here. Let, well, let, me, let me suggest this. Here is an easy solution. All we need to do in the state of New York is to set up a special unit of the Attorney General's Criminal oh. Enforcement Division for bias or race-related crime. We do it for Medicaid fraud. If we can set up special criminal units, special prosecutors, to please doctors, we can certainly set up no, the protective I'll tell you what we should do. I'll tell you what we should do. We've heard these men be called ineffective, all right? And I think, to this, point, I think to this point they've been somewhat ineffective, but I'll tell you what we should do. We should call for Attorney General Abrams to wash his hands of the Tawana Brawley case, all. all right? Why and should then black, we should ask, why should, and we why should, should ask, black, because it's been stymied nonsense. all the way. Why should black been stymied be at the mercy by of local prosecutors from the governor, from the attorney general. Local Let prosecutors the state assembly. are politicians. Let the state assembly they are subject to the a dynamics of racism. Then you've got to have a special unit. I'll go for that. Ensure 
the sensitive and correct administration of justice for black as well as white. Hold on, hold on for a minute, brother. Everybody been up here talking about what they feel. Let's go to the Bible. Do you know why whites and blacks are against each other? Abel and Cain was brothers. Cain slew Abel. What did the Most High do to Cain? He set a mark upon him. Leprosy. That's what you white people got. That's why you hate the black. That's why you go on the beach trying to get proud like us. Okay? This is not. Let me ask you a question. Quickly, quickly, let me ask this man a question. What is your solution to heal it? We can all attack, man. We can all attack, and let me tell you, yeah, but I got facts If we get so stupid that we end up with a race war, ain't nobody winning except the politicians, all right? The most high are going to win. The politicians are not going to win. The children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Puerto Ricans, and Jamaicans, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel is going to win because they're going to be the ones to liberate out of here. Those are the real Jews. Christ ain't no white boy. How about let's not worry about who's going to win. How about bringing us together? You're talking, man. You're talking. I may be young, I'm only 18 years old, but throughout the year of black history, all black leaders like Malcolm X, these brothers up here, have been put down by the media, and I've noticed that brothers that have been put down by the media are the ones that we should follow, because people like Boyd Anus, who sits down, talks a lot of crap, but does nothing for black people, because he's not a leader, he's just a figurehead, because if you notice, the media loves this gentleman, and you should sit down and wonder why does the press love him. No, you be quiet, because you had your chance. You should know this, because the media likes this man because he does nothing for black people. And it, that's the main key, because they're speaking up. And the reason why they're speaking up, that's why they're being treated this way. If they were quiet, sit down and take the nonsense, and do nothing, everybody would love these brothers. Listen, let me tell you something. Let, 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 me, let me tell you something. Mark. Any, uh, Alan, Alan made one mistake. He accused us of calling Bob Abrams a bigot, and the mistake was, in addition to calling Bob Abrams the bigot that he is, we also call the governor of the state of New York a bigot. Anyone who thinks that he's not, look at what he's done on Yonkers. First of all, he does not have the courage to deal with that. Then he said that the problem in Yonkers was that it was not Harry Belafonte or Lena Horne. He said that the whites and Yonkers would have no problem with Harry Belafonte Look, and I mean, Lena Horne. Let me Horn. tell you something. I know, what the I know a the little bit about York Yonkers, said, all right? And I don't think the people in Yonkers would be nearly as upset if they moved that, moved that low-income housing, all right, not just into the poor middle-class neighborhood. Let the rich have some of it, too, all right? Mark, we'll be back in a minute with the rest of the people. everybody to the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Let me first uh, say that Reverend Sharpton, you said that Roy Innes was a bigot. I'd like to invite you back tomorrow night to face Roy Innes one-on-one. -on -one. Would you do that? Right here? Right here. You have Roy Innes here, I'll be here tomorrow night. You'll be here, all right? I want to thank our band, the Flaming Caucasians. September 15th, they'll be at the Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science. Most of all, we're going to do it again tomorrow night. We're going to come up with an answer within a week. Well, we can tell the politicians to kiss my ass. We're going to do it together. Good night, everybody. You love it. You hate it. Now you can see him live. Morton Downey Jr. live at the Syria Mosque, Friday, September 30th. Brought to you by WPTT TV 22 and to Caesar Engler. Morton Downey live at the Syria Mosque, Friday, September 30th. Tickets are on sale now. And the follow Puerto Rico. Give you a red face lift. Yes. Shot me off in Harlem. Yeah, man. Beautiful Harlem. Get red beans and rice, very nice. 